Good day, folks. Everything new under the sun. We're looking at the uh, period of time just prior to the seven-year period, as I understand it in my timeline of the return to the Lord. I think great upheaval is uh, coming very shortly and has been coming indeed. What has ha been happening the last four years? We had the pandemic and now we have uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, all these things uh, are, are setting up uh, f the financial collapse of the entire world. Uh, it's potential. It happened once in 1929. It's going to happen again. Um, and that and that uh, and of course the Great Depression happened. Uh, so we we need to be aware that it could very easily happen to us. And that's the problem with our Western world and our technology and all our riches, uh, so-called and our wealth, uh, you know, supposed uh, that we don't think anything that has happened in the past can happen to us. And indeed it can. A lot of people even who were uh, born just after the Second World War don't believe World War Three can happen again. They, indeed, they don't believe the economy uh, can collapse. They don't they think the Government leaders can keep it going forever, perpetually, which is inconceivable. That's never happened in history. It, 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 currencies, fiat currencies, have and economic systems have always collapsed and crashed. That's history. So to think that all of a sudden now, after thousands of years of history, that these things are going to change and we're not going to have any more economic collapse and we're not going to have any more war, well, that's inconceivable. And one uh, triggers the other often. Economic troubles trigger war. And certainly war then triggers, uh, you know, great austerity, uh, depressionary uh, and, and massive debt because, you know, you're trying to fund the war effort. And so people take a haircut and all of a sudden, you know, the price of everything is expensive because, you know, the country just spent all its money on attempting to win the war. And that, that assumes you do win the war, you know, the 50-50 chance whether your country is going to win the war or not. Are you on the right side or not? Folks, I can tell you that. I don't know if we're on the right side this time. I don't know if we're going to be on the winning side this time. Uh, the West has <clears throat> won some big battles. Uh, World War II, obviously, um, uh, being the most recent uh, big battle. But are we going to win again? I don't know. Um, you know, we're, we're lining up. NATO is lining up. Western countries lining up against Russia and China. And they literally have billions of people, um, you know, to go to war and the technology that the U.S. has. And um, uh, at the end of the day, their people know how to uh, grow gardens and live with them much less. They don't, they're not reliant on the technological world that the complete West is reliant on. Folks, when stuff goes sideways, the first thing they're going to take out is communications and then the electrical grid. They don't have to fire a shot. All they need to do is make uh, it chaos and calamity and Mad Max in our Western countries by taking out the power, taking out cell phones, and people won't know what to do with themselves. They don't know how to do anything manually. They don't know how to grow food. <clears throat> uh, they don't know how to do all these things. Uh, they were much closer to that, obviously, during World War II. During World War I, they were even more close to that. They had outhouses. They didn't need, uh, you know, flush toilets and all these things. All the very basic things we uh, assume are going to work, water coming out of our taps. So we just assume that's all going to work. But that requires electricity. That requires pumping stations. That requires water towers if you're in a city or town. Um, and and so when all these things stop, people will go berserk. Um, and um, the uh, the uh, the uh, sanitariness of everything will go down the tubes. Uh, you know, there's going to be great disease coming out of this. And if you read Revelation chapter 12, the Four Horsemen Apocalypse is talking about economic collapse, war, great disease, and famine, and pestilence. And that's what this comes out of. When we have no money... Uh, and we can't, you know, buy antiseptic and alcohol, you know, for cleaning things. <clears throat> and we don't have the tools to boil our water because we don't know. And we, you know, we haven't lived in that sort of society, you know, for 100 years. People are going to be dying of just common diseases that have otherwise, you know, we, we should know better. But we're just so far away from that sort of stuff. So you're looking at the timeline of the eternal Lord. War in 2024. I think uh, I think we're there. I think we're in the middle of World War III. The the world just hasn't come to that conclusion, uh, and even if they have started coming to that conclusion, um, most of the West says, "Well, you know, as long as the war doesn't uh, come to me, uh, you know, I won't care, and I'm not going to stick my head up, and I'm not going to speak politically about it, and I'm not going to do anything about it." You know, just like World War II, you know, the war didn't really come to the West, to United States, to Canada. You know, some of our young men went over there and died, but uh, we didn't feel too much trouble out of it. But folks, you go to World War III and uh, a nuclear apocalypse, uh, we will certainly feel it. I think we will certainly feel World War III. 
And worse than that, <clears throat> we don't know how to deal with less. We don't know how to deal with famine, poverty, because we've been living fat, dumb, and happy, rich in our Western countries for uh, over a hundred years. And we haven't had to deal with any real trouble. Uh, you know, maybe not 100 years. So you go back to the Depression. Um, uh, so, you know, 70, 80 years ago, right? Um, 1930, that happened in. I guess it would be 90 years uh, come 2020. Anyways, uh, that lasted for about 10 years. Uh, and and so, again, we're, we're so far by that. So um, let's take a look at uh, a couple of articles. And I think it's interesting. Again, going back to China and Russia, what are they going to do? Is a, re a retaliatory event coming up? Uh, are they going to finally get together and do something about the West? And the suggestion that the chatter is that they're planning something. Warning is 247. Are Russia and China preparing an intervention to claim that the U.S. is assassinating and overthrowing leaders of countries close to the BRICS? Now, this is interesting, right? You know, we thought we were on the good side, but is our side actually the one that is going ahead and uh, yeah, attempting uh, assassinations? Are, are, are we doing these things? Just like all the mysterious burning of the poultry farms and, and the, the mysterious fires and ex mysterious explosions in the U.S. and in Russia, uh, is, is the... Uh, the strategy now to take out leaders that don't agree with the West. Um, this is a scary article, to be honest. Russia and China point to the U.S. as a country behind the most recent assassination and coup attempts against leaders close to Mos Moscow and Beijing. Remember, if you uh, uh, you know uh, agree with Moscow or agree with Russia or are on the Chinese side, um, you know the West is the Western intelligence agencies might be coming for you. In more detail, a bombshell article circulating a Russia and uh, um, Russian media sites, Chinese analysts who report that the U.S. and by extension NATO are responsible for the death of President Raisi, Raisi and Morris, says the Russian, Russian outline, uh, the Russians outline an international environment in which the U.S. has moved to the next stage, quote unquote, of killing political opponents, and. You know, do we see that even in the U.S.? Well, they've certainly talked about it with Trump, haven't they? Are they trying to politically uh, delete Trump? They absolutely are. So is the intelligence agencies, uh, do the intelligence agencies and the current political uh, uh, group in Washington, are they already uh, going after political opponents? They are uh, on, uh, you know, U.S. soil and abroad. So, Yes, we've seen this before. We see it happening. We know it's happening with Trump. And so, you know, it shouldn't be a surprise that it's happening overseas. Chinese experts draw attention to a series of events that they do not consider accidental. The assassination uh, attempt on Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, uh, Salman al Saud. Reports from Turkish authorities about a coup attempt in the country. The attempted assassination of the Slovakian Prime Minister, Robert Fico, and he was supportive of Russia, or at least against the Ukraine war. And he was also against the WHO and uh, the World Economic Forum, the whole the whole WHO uh, treaty. He was against that. Um, so Western leaders don't like that guy. They're certainly trying to shadow ban him. And uh, even, you know, maybe... Maybe there's uh, uh, mysterious figures there who are trying to uh, delete him conveniently as well. And now the plane crash of the Iranian president. Now you got to ask who's, who's behind these things, right? Or is anybody? All this happened in two to three weeks. Chinese experts point out that the leaders of the countries where these events took place either had or talked about close cooperation with China and development of the One Belt, One Road uh, project. They also distanced themselves from the West. Look out, because the West is coming after you. This is a, a, a tweet on X. Je suis bonheur. Do you uh, believe these events are a coincidental? Assassination, uh, assassination attempt on Bin Salman. Uh, whoops. Uh, uh, May 12th, another attempt at a color revolution in Georgia. Attempted coup in Turkey. Assassination attempt of Slovakian PM. So uh, there you go. You know, everybody's asking these questions. Um, are, is this all a coincidence or is something happening? <clears throat> all right, let's take a look. This, this is interesting. Um, this kind of sounds like the original, how the original invasion into Ukraine started. It started with exercise in Russian forces on the border with Ukraine. And they said they were going to turn back. Russia launches nuclear, tactical nuclear drills near Ukraine in response to Western threats. 
says uh, Russia on Tuesday confirmed that its forces kicked off tactical nuclear war drills um, in the southern, southern military district, which is near the Ukrainian border, uh, in what the Kremlin had described as a response to threats. Now, this is exactly how the, the invasion of Ukraine started. In a response to threats, they lined up military tanks, uh, vehicles on the border, uh, but said they weren't going in, and all of a sudden they went in. Is Are these threats that Russia sees, are these enough uh, to then turn these uh, tactical nuclear weapon drills live? Is there is there a go live that's uh, coming shortly here? You, I'm, I must uh, state, you guys need to be ready for this to go hot. At any time, are your preps ready? Um, certainly, I know I'm. I'm struggling. We're struggling uh, with with money to. You know, we're we're using our preps because things are so expensive. Um, uh, versus even you know stockpiling it. So you know it's hard. Everybody's having a hard time of it. But you need to do what you can. You need to hedge your bets. Um, have a little cash on the side. Uh, you know, however little that is, anything is better than nothing. Um, gold and silver, if you've got it, you know, hopefully you got it when it's much cheaper. It's getting expensive now. You need to have cans of food in your, um, uh, in your house somewhere, uh, stored away in your pantry, uh, ready for when food gets really expensive. What I fear is that this is going to be dragged out like a 10 year great depression and it won't be all shocking on in 24 hours and all of a sudden you're surviving on, off your, uh, uh, your store, your stored food. Uh, it, it, it's more sinister. Uh, and harder to deal with as a prepper, it's going to be more like, well, things will get uh, pricier, so you won't be able to stockpile as much. And then you'll start eating through your stockpile, and you won't be able to replenish it. And then it'll come to a point where you'll just simply run out of both. You'll run out of money to buy food, and you'll run out of your pantry food. And, and that that's how it's going to go. And I think that's, what we're, that's what's happening uh, right now, <clears throat> if you were to ask me. So, you know, we're all ready for this shock and awe event where all of a sudden the lights go out. And then we're surviving, bam, um, so that we can start uh, portioning and planning and, and uh, uh, rationing our food. Um, but this slow, gradual, uh, you know, expense of more expensive foods, uh, more exp expensive gas, which is just wearing us and grinding us down and all our preps down, this is the thing to be concerned about and to be aware of. The Defense Ministry announced that the exercise is aimed to test the readiness of the non-strategic nuclear arms to ensure territorial integrity. Now, there's been suggestions that um, they need to make a big strike with a nuclear weapon big enough that it's going to scare the West and scare the civilians and the citizens of the West so that the citizens then tell their leaders uh, to get out or to make peace, basically. Something that's going to scare the dickens out of them, as they say, um, so that they kind of ward off a larger nuclear war. Is NATO going to be swayed by that? Is the uh, military industrial complex going to be swayed by all that? I don't know. Ministry of Defense specified that this is in response to provocative statements and threats by certain Western officials. So this kind of adds into the whole um, <clears throat> uh, France and Britain uh, targeting uh, because Russia knows that there's uh, NATO troops on the ground. There's NATO troops uh, flying and uh, and controlling um, the the rockets uh, and missiles and these sorts of things. And so it's only a matter of time now uh, before I think Russia decides. You know, we have to do something big because NATO is not backing down, and it certainly doesn't look like Russia's uh, backing down. Um, and I'm not saying either side is right. Uh, I think both sides are absolutely corrupt. And both sides, you know, certainly the, the Western side is the com companies are making a ton of money off war and they always do. And also it's a great cover for all the debt of, of the, the West of the United States. Um, it's a great way to cover that up and say, oops, you know, the economy crashed and we're bankrupt because of war. You know, it wasn't because of the politicians. That's what they're going to say, right? Under the order of the commander in chief, the military exercise involving practice preparation and use of tactical nuclear weapons started in the Southern Military District. Practice of preparation and use of tactical nuclear weapons. Um, it says, more recently, U.S. and U.K. officials have been pressing for more Ukrainian attacks directly on Russian soil. Now, Ukraine's been going after Russia's power systems and Russia's oil uh, processing plants. Um, and lights are going out off on both sides. And, you know, also in the West, we also have, you know, these ex uh, mysterious explosions, mysterious fires, mysterious uh, pipeline bursts, uh, all sorts of mysterious things. And now we're talking about assassination uh, attempts, folks. This is where we are 
in this war. We're now talking about uh, assassination attempts and countries potentially going after political rivals. Um, you know, to see this timeline of events, you would say, this is crazy. This is straight out of a book. This is happening before our eyes in real time, and not many people are aware of it. Certainly people who only listen to mainstream media, they have no idea. They haven't seen this timeline. They haven't seen all these uh, different details put together like some of uh, these uh, prepper channels do. Canadian Prepper, uh, myself, um, Southern Prepper One. Uh, you know, th we're putting all these things together and showing you the timeline, the um, this, you know, the downward spiral of the world uh, to uh, what looks, you know, worse than the start of World War II, to be honest. <clears throat> you know, how many assassinations will it take uh, at that point, you have to ask. Um, and it's going to be far worse when this battle starts. Among, uh, another among the threats emanating from the West is possibly the possibility of deploying NATO troops in Ukraine, the idea has gained steam since France, uh, Francis, Emmanuel Mac Francis Emmanuel Macron first proposed it months ago at a security conference. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. Strategic nuclear forces um, testing their weapons, getting ready to launch. And, you know, if this is like the first time uh, before they invaded Ukraine, this could easily go live and we could easily see the use of a, a, a nuclear weapon um, you know, over the next week. I don't know when. Maybe it won't be for months. Maybe it will never happen. But I suspect World War III is going to happen. And I suspect the events of um, uh, Bible prophecy are going to happen with the timeline of the return of the Lord. I think we're heading to war. I don't know when, you know, the hot war is going to break out, but folks, we're in enough war that supply chains are already uh, breaking down. The prices of goods and services are increasing. Uh, you know, if 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 not just inflation, then by also all the sanctions and all the um, geopolitical uh, trouble in the world. So you need to be prepared in your heart, mind, and soul. You need to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You need to have some preps. You need to have some solar uh, power capacity, some battery backup um, to charge some things. You need to have some communications, some radios. You need to have food storage. You need to have seeds. You need to have um, some implements, some tools, rakes and shovels and, um, uh, you know, things to uh, uh, plant a garden. Basic things. Basis, basic things that you, they, people would have used daily 150 years ago. Uh, it may not be a bad idea to build an outhouse in, in your backyard. Uh, you know, if you're in a city, make it look like a, a nice shed, but you only have to, you know, dig a hole. And uh, that could be your uh, bathroom if there's no running water. And that's an easy thing to do. Just, you know, get some plans, download them now, print them out, and you'll have them if you ever need to make one. And um, keeping yourself clean uh, and sanitary is going to be one of the biggest struggles when um, all this goes sideways because likely people are going to die from uh, disease uh, and infection uh, when, when things go sideways. I'll leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.